What's going on guys? In this video, we'll be covering string formatting in Python. So this topic actually will be comprised of multiple videos because I want to go over a few different styles of string formatting in Python. So we'll first start off with the old style string formatting, which is also known as the C style, which comprises of the module symbol. So the percent sign or the operator or the module operator is what signifies formatting in the old style. All right, so let's just dive right into the old style string formatting. So anytime you want to use uh, string formatting using the old style, you have to first use the module followed by a conversion type. So if you look at this markdown cell here, you'll see module S, module D, module F. So S represents string, D represents integer, and F represents floating point numbers. So you have to specify what your variable is going to be. Is it going to be a string, integer, or floating point? Then we also have digits, a hex representation, and octal. But we'll focus on the first three first. All right. So let's just look at an example so we get a better understanding of what all this information is. All right. So we have a variable with the assigned value, Stacy. And now we're going to try to use that name in a string using string formatting. So we have hello followed by modulo s. So modulo s represents string. And notice how modulo s is within the string. So it's within the quotation marks. So you have hello, modulo s, and this uh, modulo s is actually part of the string. Now, if you want to assign a value to this placeholder, you need to call modulo outside of the string followed by the variable that you want to assign to the placeholder. So module s is within the string, and that's the placeholder, and it's waiting for a string value. And then outside of the string, you call module followed by the variable, in this case, name. So if you run this, you'll see our first example of string formatting using the old style string formatting. So hello, Stacy. So the module s, the placeholder, has been replaced by the variable name. Now let's take a look at how to do that with multiple variables. So we have hello, module s, module s dot, your current balance is dollar sign modulo f. So these are the three different placeholders. And now if we want to assign variables to these placeholders, you have to feed them into a tuple. So we have Holden, Ford, and they have 816 so let's see. So the first one is going to be represented by the first value, which is Holden. The second module S will be represented by Ford. And the module F, which is the last conversion type or last placeholder, will be represented by 8162019. So if we run this, hello Holden Ford, your current balance is 8,162,019, I think. All right. Now, we can actually arrange the code in a better way to make it look, I don't know, a little bit cleaner. So we can put the data, or we could save this tuple into a variable data and just feed it modulo data. So this is another way to make it a little cleaner. And you'll notice, this is an important point, the format string has the placeholders in place, but you don't have to call it right away. So you don't have to assign values or the variables to the placeholders right away. So format string has three placeholders, but we are not assigning any values to those placeholders. We're saving the string as it is with placeholders, and we can assign it whenever we want. So if you run this, it's the same thing, but just a little cleaner. All right. Now the module operator has actually a lot of arguments, and this could get a little confusing. We'll go step by step, and we'll break down each of these arguments. All right. So we have modulo key flags with precision, length type, conversion type, and then we have module values. So values are just the variables. So the values will be, in this case, up here, uh, Holden, Ford, and 8162019. So that will be the values. Now the, the conversion type, if we look up here, these are all the conversion types, module S, module D, module F, et cetera. Those are the conversion types. All right, so modulo, it marks the beginning of the argument specifier. Key, flags, width, precision, we haven't discussed yet. Uh, length, we haven't discussed yet. And conversion type, which we just discussed. All right, so we're going to start off with some simple examples, and then we'll go into each of these 
arguments. So once again, this is a simple example, modulo s, modulo s, followed by the modulo sign, followed by the variables you want to feed into these placeholders. All right, so in this case, we are seeing the modulo, which is the start of the module operator or start of the string formatting, followed by the s. So the s represents the conversion type, which is number seven on our list. Or if we look here, it's this one here, conversion type. All right. Now, this example is just going to show you that the type or the data type is important. So if you feed in, or if, so if your placeholder has the conversion type F, it expects a float. And if you don't give it a float, in this case, we're giving foo and bar, you'll get a type error, must be real number, not string. Okay. So now we're going to tackle the argument key. So this key is an optional argument. But what it does is it allows you to feed a dictionary and you could put the key value within the brackets. If we take a look at this example, you'll see we have a dictionary with two keys, a foo and a bar with values. Now, if you look at the print statement, we have a module followed by a key followed by the conversion type. So the key up here followed by the conversion type back here. So foo in brackets represents the optional or represents the argument key, which is optional. And then with modulo, you feed in the dictionary variable. So very simple. So foo represents the key within the dictionary variable that you pass in. And here we go, 10. So in this case, all we're doing is printing out the placeholder because we don't have any other characters or any other parts of the string. All right. Next up is width. Now width specifies the minimum total width. So width specifies how much space you would like your placeholder to take up. So let's just take a look at this example. All right, so we have print total number of students. Now you see module two followed by the conversion type. So the module is the start of the formatting. The two represents width. Now take a look up here. Width always precedes conversion type. So you have module two followed by the conversion type, which is D. And remember, D stands for integer. Now, if you take a look at the next one, total number of girls, module four. So we want a width of four, or we want this placeholder to take up four slots or four spaces, followed by D, which is the conversion type integer. Now, you'll notice something interesting. Our first variable has three integers, but we only want it to take up two integers, the module two. And the next one takes up module four. So we want our width or the placeholder to take up four spaces, but we're only feeding in three spaces or three digit integers. So if we run this, we'll see total number of students 240. So despite only having two spaces, it auto adjusted. So if the amount of spaces you allocate to your placeholder is less than the actual number, what Python will do is it'll auto adjust to make sure that the width is equal to, at the very least, the amount of spaces of the variable. So despite being two, it auto adjusted to three because our variable has three digits or three spaces. Now with total number of girls, you'll see that it added an extra space. Since we gave it four slots or the width is four, so the placeholder has four empty spaces and we're only feeding in three 120. We have an extra space. So that extra space is not filled. So it remains as an extra space. So that's it. So basically width specifies how much space you want your placeholder to hold. Now this might sound very C-like because it is. This is the C style formatting. That's why you have to specify strings and digits and floats and etc because this is all taken from the C language. All right, now we're going to look at a couple of more conversion types. We had the octal. So if I go back up here, uh, let's see, we had O representing octal, and octal is just numbers in the eight base or base eight. So let's see. Here we go. So we have an octal module now seven is going to represent the width seven and zero is going to represent octal and we're going to convert 
the 25 into base 8, which is 31. And since we have all this extra space that was unfilled, it remains as space. Now, instead of specifying a specific number like 7, you can actually feed in a wildcard asterisk for the width. So here, instead of feeding a specific value for width, what we're doing is feeding in an asterisk. Asterisk can take any number. So let's take a look at this example a little closer. We have modulo asterisk s equals modulo asterisk f. Now the way to feed in numbers to these asterisks is to feed it within the tuple itself. So this 10 is going to represent the asterisk. The ABC D will represent the string. The 13 will represent the asterisk. And the 1.171.62.8269 will represent the float. So you'll see that within the tuple, which consists of the variables for the placeholders, we'll have two extra variables because we have two extra arguments within the placeholder. So the asterisk is represented by 10 and 13 respectively. So if you run this, so we have ABCD filled with white space to the left because our width was a lot larger than the string itself. And the same with the float. The float was 13 and our float was only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8. So we have extra padding. All right. And of course, once again, this is very useful because you can hold your string with its placeholders and then call it whenever you want with the variables to the placeholders. So you can easily create multiple strings with multiple different uh, variables for the placeholders. So here I changed it to 19 and 13. So that's one of the sort of strengths or flexibility of using uh, placeholders or formats with strings. It allows you to format whenever you want. So next up is flags. Now flags is a pretty confusing argument, so I'll do my best to explain this. All right, so we have different flags. We have a zero, a minus flag, a space, and a plus. So if you see a zero flag, it's zero padding. If you see a minus, the value or the variable is going to be left adjusted. And if you see a space, there will be a blank space. And if you see a plus, it will add a sign to your character. All right, now there's a lot of nuances and a lot of quirks that you really have to be aware of uh, when it comes to using the flags argument. So let's just jump right into it. But first, before that, let's just see flags come out after key. So if you're going to use a lot of these, it's, it's, a, it's important to remember the order. All right. So let's go with the first example. So we have modulo 3. The 3 represents the width, and D represents the uh, conversion type. So the conversion type is D, so that represents integer. All right. So now if we look at the second example, we have an extra argument, the 0. And this 0 will represent the flag argument. So the zero represent zero padding. So we have zero padding, three as the width, D as the conversion type, and the value that's going to be fed into this placeholder is one. So since we have one, but our width is three, and we're using the zero flag, instead of being padded with spaces, it's going to be filled with zeros. So the empty space from the three width is going to be padded with zeros. All right, so the first example is the normal example, which is padding with space. And the second example is the zero padding, or the zero flag, which shows the padding with zeros. Next example. All right, so we have modulo 5, D. So 5 width, D, followed by, I'm not sure what you call this line, but this uh, stick line. And we have the value 1. So we're going to have four empty spaces, followed by 1, followed by this stick line. Now if we look at the next one, the minus means left adjusted. So since we only have one value, that one value is going to get pushed all the way to the left. And the empty space is going to be followed after the value. So you'll see what I mean when I run this. All right. So once again, like we predicted, since we have only one space or one integer, one digit within a five width placeholder, we're going to have four spaces followed by the value itself, followed by the stick. Now here, when you use the negative flag, which means left adjusted, 
the value is going to be pushed all the way to the left and the space is going to follow it. Since our placeholder requires five spaces, or since our placeholder has five spaces, we're going to have one followed by four spaces. Remember, the stick thing is not part of the placeholder. It's just a string or just a, a character within our string and has nothing to do with the conversion type or the placeholder. So we have one followed by four spaces followed by the stick sign. All right. Now there's, like I said, quirks and nuances. If you combine two different flags, so you could combine a zero flag with a negative flag, the, the negative flag will override the zero flag. So basically everything overrides the zero padding. So if you look at this example here, we have a zero padding and a negative flag followed by five followed by D. So instead of having zero pads, the negative flag or the left adjustment, here we go, the one, will override the zero padding. And there are many examples like that. So we're going to look at that in the next cell. So the first one, well, actually, we still have to go over the space flag. So the space flag basically just adds space. All right, so if we look at this first example, we have module D, module space one. In this case, nothing happens. The space has to be between the module and the D. So if you look at the second example as well, module D, module space, a negative one, there's going to be no space here as well. Now let's look at the third example. You see this module followed by a space followed by a D. So whenever you put a space in between the module and the conversion type, you are accessing or assigning the space flag. So if you look at one blank space character present, colon, you'll see there's no space. Our one comes right afterwards. But since we're putting one space in between the module and the conversion type, we are assigning the space flag. Now, if you do it twice, if you try to add two spaces, uh, nothing happens. The space flag can only be specified once, and you can only add one space, as far as I know. Now, this is probably not that important because if you really want a space, you could just put a space in your string itself. But just for uh, completion purposes, I've decided to include this as well. All right, so as you can see, there's one space between the space and one, and still one space between the space and one, despite us putting two spaces here. All right. Now another nuance or quirk is that if you have a negative value, you see this negative one, space doesn't work. So no space in this case. So you have to be careful of all these little nuances and uh, quirks when it comes to string formatting when you're using the flags. All right, next up is the sign flag. Now if you want to add either a plus or minus, or in this case a plus, to your integer, you can use the sign flag. So what happens is since a one or automatically represents a plus one in Python, a one is a positive number, you can't really add the plus sign to it. In this case, when you have an integer and you want to add a plus to it, you can do so with the sign flag. Okay, so in this example first, we'll show that we cannot add a plus one. So we have a modulo D and we're trying to replace the D with the plus one. And if we do so, we're going to get an error. Or not an error, but you're going to see that the plus one doesn't show up, or plus one is neglected. So sign can't be added. So despite having a plus one, the D, the integer, doesn't recognize a plus. So if you do want to recognize the plus one, what you can do is use the plus sign, or the plus flag. So if you look at this, uh, this portion here, we have modulo plus, which is the sign flag, followed by D, which is the conversion type, so we have the module sign followed by plus, which is the plus flag or the sign flag. And then we have D followed by the module. So this plus is actually going to be adding a plus to our one. So let's just take a look. Once again, we have the module, the plus, which is the sign flag or the plus flag. And then we have the D, which represents the conversion type followed by module one. So this one is going to be presented as a plus one. So that's how you add a plus to your integers. All right, some additional quirks. So here the sign is included, but space is ignored. So whenever you use 
in this case the plus, which is a sign flag, you override the space flag. So all this space represents space flag, and this plus represents a sign flag, but the sign flag will override the space flag. The second one, default sign is added, but space is not included because of the sign flag. So in this case, the negative one will show up as negative one because we're using the sign operator. So the sign operator should be allowing the default sign and the space operator will be overwritten because we have the sign operator. Now the final example, no sign flag, hence space is added. So here there's no signs, so the space flag has priority. Above when we use a sign flag, sign flag has priority over the space flag. Now these are just little quirks that might be a little confusing, but I've just, just included them. I don't really use much of these flags, so you guys are welcome to ignore it if you want. Another argument, the precision argument. Now this is kind of important. It's an optional argument, but it's used a lot with floats, and you'll see this a lot in code. All right, so let's take a look at the first line. We have module 3 followed by D. So 3 is the width, D is the conversion type. Now the second one is important. We have module 5, which is the width, and the dot. The dot represents the precision argument. So we have 5.2. Now the number following the precision argument, which is the dot, represents how many numbers you want to display after your period when it comes to a float. So here, 5 is the, the width, so we want 5 total numbers or 5 total spaces. And we want to have two, the dot two represents two values after the period or the decimal point. So in this case, our number actually is 05.333. So what we should actually be showing is 05.33. So we're only asking for two precision points. So one of the threes will be cut off. So let's just run this. So we have 5.33. So basically, 5 is the width. Oh, actually, I guess the 0 got cut off as well. So we have a space, 5, that's 2, the dot, that's 3, and 3, 3, which is 5. So space, 5, dot, 3, 3, equals 5 width. And dot, 3, 3, we only have two values following the period because we specified using the precision flag or the using the precision argument that we only want two digits following the period. And now we'll look at another example, print ABCD stock price colon uh, modulo dot 2F. So in this case, we're not specifying the width. The width could be whatever it wants, but we want to have only two values after the dot or after the period. So in this case, we should get back 188.83 because we only want two values after the dot or period. So the 667 should be cut off because we only want dot 83, two digits after the decimal. So 188.84. So in this case, it rounds it up. So we can actually use asterisk as we did earlier to fix precision as well. So same example as the, the width. I think if I'm not mistaken as width, you can use an asterisk and then later on feed the values, which in this case will be 3. And 3, we want our precision flag to be of the value of 3. Now here's just some more sort of quirky examples when you use with octal. So we have 7 with octal, so this should give 6 spaces or 5 spaces and the value of 25 turned into base 8. So we have 5 spaces followed by 31. If you use precision with octal, so 7.6, you'll see that it gets padded with zeros. Now, I'm not really sure why this is the way it is, but that's just the way it is. All right. Now we can also print exponential values. So here we have 13, which is going to represent the width, the dot, which is going to represent the precision flag or the precision argument, followed by 3. So we want to only display three values after the period. So we only want to display 124 or 787. Now the E is saying we want to represent 
the value in exponential format. So we've run this. You'll see the exponential format is just a single digit followed by a dot, followed by the, the rest of the values, and then e is raised to the, the value that comes after e. So in this case, the 10 will be raised to the second power, so that's 100. So you would have just have to move the decimal two points, one, two. So that's just a, a quick explanation of exponential value. All right. Now we're going to move on with precision with strings. All right, so we can use precision with strings as well. And what it does is it just truncates the string. So we have 11, which is going to be the width, the dot representing the precision, and then the six. So we want to truncate the width to only hold the first six values of the string that we provide. So basically, only six letters are going to be included in here. So formatting, we have F-O-R, M-A-T-T, -T, um, one, two, three, M-A-T. So basically truncating the values. And the same here, but everything is going to be left adjusted. So let me just run this so you guys can see what I mean. So as you can see, instead of getting formatting the entire variable, we've truncated to only include the first six. And here we have only included the first five, but it's going to be left adjusted and the space will be to the right. So if we want to include more letters, let's just convert this to seven. And let's just run this. You'll see that we'll get an extra letter. So format with an extra T. If we do nine, you'll see if we get a couple of extra letters. So I think this is a, a very long video, so we'll end it here. And in the next video, we will cover using the format method. And then the next video after that, or maybe I could fit in the F strings as well. All right, so that's it with string formatting using the old school C style. I'll see you guys in the next video.